The acronym SEBI represents a very interesting idea, the Social Enterprise Boost Initiative. It's essentially an initiative of Jamaica National's philanthropic arm, JN Foundation, in cooperation with the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, that seeks to mobilize increased employment, investment, and revenue within communities across Jamaica. On Thursday, April 30, SEBI hosted the first in a series of discussions dubbed Let's Talk Social Economy Matters. Safri Brown, the general manager of Jane Foundation, noted that many small community-based income-generating organizations do not position themselves as businesses and thus hamper their true potential. She gives an idea of their potential by looking at some global numbers on social entrepreneurship. In 2012, social enterprises, one of the key players in the social revolution, generated US $2.1 trillion in revenue, and its growth is estimated at 15% per annum. There are over 650,000 social enterprises in the US, 400,000 in Europe, 70,000 in the UK, and 20,000 in Little Australia. While data for emerging countries is more difficult to quantify, in India alone, there are three million grassroots organizations operating like social enterprises. We know that $8 to Jamaica have been on the decline since 1990. And whilst it has increased in certain years, the overall trend is one of decline. Here, Safra Brown introduces Dr. K. Naif, Director of Social Entrepreneurship at the University of the West Indies. But we believe that we need to address uh, the issues of development by focusing on, on the social economy. To set the context for the discussion, we will hear from Dr. Naif, a lecturer and researcher in the Office of Social Entrepreneurship, Mona School of Business and Management, UWI, in the field of entrepreneurship and strategic planning with a focus on social entrepreneurship and community safety and security. We have to find a way to shorten all that, Dr. Knife. According to Dr. Knife, social enterprise may be new words, but the actual practice has been around in Jamaica for a long time. It's really about empowering people to empower themselves. Entrepreneurship is defined as a process of creating value by bringing together a unique set of resources in order to exploit an opportunity. It is not necessarily about business and business ventures. It's about a certain kind of thinking, which Jamaica captured by saying Tony Han McFashan. Use innovation and creativity to do the best thing that you can do to improve yourself and the lives of your own people. So it means from during enslavement, we were social entrepreneurs because we wanted to improve our quality of life. And burning a plantation might be the way of practicing social entrepreneurship, which out of that emerged a peasantry which we know diversified the Jamaican economy post-1846 after the Sugar Equalization Act. And today it is now called the informal space, the informal economy. Still, the only place that is growing in Jamaica for the past 50 years, because the formal space had not grown for the past 50 years. So therefore, for all of you out there who, that, who do not appreciate your own work, you need to recognize that without your work, there would not be a Jamaica today and a very real we, yes? He sought to explain the paradox that is Jamaica. If you look at Jamaica, Jamaica is probably the most extreme country. We are the best in all good things and also the best in most worse things and bad things. But we're really good in everything that we try to do. Dr. Naif explains the importance of the fourth global hub, which he described as being anchored in the Caribbean, a situation which offers much potential but which needs major changes at the policy-making level. In the Caribbean, wherever you want to anchor the hub, the, job, the Caribbean is not a big place. More importantly, because Jamaica is at the center of the Caribbean, wherever the hub is anchored, every ship must pass Jamaica. And it means that most of those ships will stop for refueling. Maybe refueling enough water, refueling enough food, refueling enough de-stressors, entertainment, I mean, refueling will take place, which means you have hundreds of persons who are coming off those ships all around the island, not just down in, in the south part of Jamaica, the southeast part of Jamaica, which is Kingston and St. Andrew, but all around the island, just as in the old olden days. Columbus didn't come to Kingston and St. Andrew, he came to where? St. Anne. People still be going to St. Anne. 
But many persons will go in there. So you ask yourself, what kind of things will happen in those places, both good and bad? Because remember, you know, entrepreneurs are persons who really see opportunities, not necessarily problems. Now, the Caribbean as well become one of the hottest places in the world. Set of implication for traditional approaches towards enterprises, especially those that are located near the shores, hotels in particular. Yes, still, if you look at most of our development plans for the Caribbean, it's anchored in a hotel industry. Most of those plans are still anchored in the hotel industry. So if we're thinking long term, then we will need to question the anchoring. Limited understanding of social entrepreneurship practices. And this is not about the people out there in the street. It's about policymakers and people in academia. Because the person in the street have been doing these things for many years, but do not really understand that they've been doing it. Now, we can bring more structure to make it better, but they've been doing it. But there's a limited understanding out there. Low level of social value creation and high level of vulnerability. This came out of a research that we have done among 100 different organizations. And we found that most of those organizations were not sustainable for a number of reasons. The primary reason being that their revenue source, their income source, is controlled by other persons. I mean, they are really welfare organizations, delivering really needed services, but welfare nonetheless. However, out of necessity, we try to do some fundraising. And what we have found that the bigger the organization is usually the more scope there is for enterprise development, but sometimes they do not even recognize that the work that they are doing can generate economic value. I mean, I was just at CXC this morning and having a discussion with CXC. CXC is about 40 years old. Which other institution within the Western Hemisphere have as much experience in running programs at high school levels like CXC? But they don't see it as a service that they should be offering in terms of consulting services to anybody in the Western Hemisphere. But they could. Interesting possibilities for social entrepreneurship, social enterprise in Jamaica. Now next week, we shall explore more of these possibilities, which tend to be more inclusive rather than exclusive. And that's the Achievers for this week.